G'day YouTubers. Now that I've started anchoring outside a little bit for overnighting, I decided I needed a better anchor for anchoring on reefs. I don't want to keep risking my good plow anchor because sooner or later it's going to get snagged down there and I'll lose it. I had a look around to see what was available to buy in the way of reef anchors and I wasn't really happy with any of them. But I did know someone who's been anchoring outside for many years and they showed me the anchor they're using. This is made with pipe and the usual reef anchor spokes and it's filled with lead to give it some weight. Well I didn't happen to have the right size pipe but I did have a solid bar of iron, a little bit longer than needed and that's plenty heavy enough so I decided I'd make one. And this is a little video. Not really fishing but it is fishing related. Hope you enjoy it. Well, I've raided my scrap metal box for items I need to make a reef anchor. I found this for the shaft. It is solid. I'm not going to fill it with lead. If I was using pipe, which works fine, I would fill that with lead to give it a bit more weight. I've got a circle that I've cut out of something for some other job, which is roughly the same size as that, so it will be grinding. I'll have that right to use as a spacer, a little bit away from the shaft. Got a bit of pipe, which I'll just tack onto the top just to give me something to bend the rod around so that I can get a de-shackle into it. And I got this to bend around the top for the de-shackle. That's a little bit of about 14, 14, 15 mil. And I got these 12 mil rods for the spokes. I had to buy these rods for the spokes. I didn't have enough of any 10 or 12 mil, 10 mil's fine. But I didn't have enough of it, didn't have any of it actually, so I had to buy that, but everything else is out of the scrap box, so it's going to be a fairly cheap anchor. I'm going to cut these in half, I want roughly 600mm for each length. That'll give me plenty of weld, make sure it's nice and strong, way too much really, but it'll work. Let's go and give those ends a bit of a grind, get the sharp edge off of them. There's a small sacrificial piece of that pipe that I'm going to use temporarily while I bend some rod. I just cut it off, it'll be thrown out. Put the rest back in the scrap heap in case I need a small bit again some other time. Well, that's the shaft of the anchor I've just got propped up there with a couple of old clamps sitting on my half finished welding table. Too many jobs on the go at the moment. A couple of bits of scrap shelving bracket so you just hold that piece of pipe in place on the end there. And I'm just going to tack it with a couple of tack wells, nothing flash, and it doesn't matter what sort of rod you use, how good the wells are, as long as it just holds it in place while you bend some uh, rod around there to take the de-shackle. Flip them over, and I'll tack on the other side. all it needs just to hold him in place. At right angles to the pipe here and down oh, roughly about 200 mils give or take. Just so I can get a real long bead there. It doesn't need to be that long. I just like to do overkill on the wells. Got it all propped up there. Main thing is it's centered on the shaft at right angles to the piece of pipe we welded in to bend around. I'm just doing in now. And for this weld, I'm using 1 8 inch, that's 3.2 millimeter, 70 18 rods. Bit of an overkill, I know, but I don't want these welds letting go. Now, next thing to do is to get that bent around there and down the other side and cut him off the length. So I think I'm going to have to go off camera to do that because my advice where I'm going to go and do it 
isn't in a good camera position, so I'll do it and I'll come back and I'll show you what I've done. Well, there's the rod bed around the end of it. I just gotta cut him off to length so we can cut off blade and an angle grinder and I'll cut the wells on this piece of pipe now. It was just to make sure that the rod ended up with a big enough hole in it to get the uh, D shackle through. Nothing more. And there we are, all cut off, ready to weld. That's him there. Could have been a pretty event, but I didn't have any oxy to heat it up and I didn't want to get the forge going. It's a lot of effort starting that just for that one little bend. So now I'll just put a clamp on to pull this other end in. That's got him pulled in. Just put a tack in that and hold him. Right, well that's the, that's the ring all welded on. The rope will break before that ring will come off. In amongst that mess of scrap iron here is the rod that I'm going to weld on to the shaft here. I've just left a little gap below the loop for the D-shackle. That's probably around about 350 sticking out. Thereabouts, 320 to 350, that area. I'm going to weld all the way down there. But for now, I'm just going to tack it up the top because I've got to eyeball this. Everything's got to be straight in the center. And it's all just eyeballed. I've got no jigs to do it with. So I'm going to tack it in place first, make sure it's all right, and then I'll go ahead and weld everything. can cut that if I need to, fair size tack, but I'm going to roll the knife and do the other side next. Okay, it's all six of them on. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to fit this round piece in down here. Just so I've got a bit of spring in these if I need it. I don't hope I don't need it. Just in case there's a bit of spring in them still, I'll get that sorted up in place. Got this circle here, trimmed it up with the grinder. Now I'm just going to position it in here somewhere about or anywhere between 120 and 150 out, which should be fine. About there's good. Leaves that much to bend to a prong. There we go. That's 125 to 130. That'll do. I'll weld that in there. But because the 7018 rods are such a hard start, I'm going to use 6013 rods to weld this. And don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with 6013, it's a good rod. cool for a while before I come back and finish welding that, uh, mainly because it's just too hot to handle.
So there's the finished product. I've gone through and run the wire brush over it, got all the welding slag off, and now I have to decide whether I'm going to paint it or galvanise it. And I think I'm inclined to get it galvanised. I'll ring up and find out how long it takes and how much it costs and go from there. And now that I've got it all welded up, the next thing to do before I paint him is to bend these out into shape. Now bending them before I paint them because the stress of bending them after the paint's dried on will crack the paint. On that subject, I'm not getting it galvanised. The reason being that these days they have a minimum cost on doing galvanising and that's $220. Back in the day, you used to be able to take small jobs like this along and they'd put them in the bin until uh, they had a big enough batch to go through and they'd just put it through with everything else and charge you accordingly. With a minimum charge on it now, wow, this is getting painted. It's a bit of a shame, so anyway, to bend these things. Pretty easy to bend, but get yourself a bit of pipe for a lever. I don't know if this is long enough. If I have any trouble bending it, I'll get a longer piece. The longer you pipe, the easier it's going to be to bend. This is doable. And I'm just easing the pipe out a little bit every now and then, just to establish the radius on the bend. And that looks pretty reasonable to me. That's about 45, 50 degrees, I think. To bend this, you really do need something substantial to lock it down on. I've got this half-built welding table. Plenty of weight in that, so I'm just using that. Okay, it's two of them. Do the same for the others, I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished. Let's put the camera back on for a second to bend these last two. Because I went out, I got a longer bar. That was just too hard with that one. This makes the job a lot easier. I won't bother showing you the painting of him. I'll tell you the finished product. But I will show you what I got to paint him with. I went to the hardware and I got some etch primer just to make sure I get a good surface to stick to because I want the paint to last as long as possible and I got some cold galvanised paint. The etch primer is meant to work with it but there's a whole heap of brands of cold galvanised paint and the cold galvanised got a lot of zinc in it. So I went around and I picked up every tin of a different brand that was called cold galvanised and this Duolox Industrial Metal Shield was the heaviest tin, so I reckon it's got the most zinc content, and that's the one I picked up and bought. There might be something better around, but there certainly wasn't at the hardware shop I was at. Well, there it is, painting's finished. Dropped a lot of paint on the scrap metal I used as a drop sheet, but that's okay, that's what it was there for. Probably a few runs in the paint, I was very liberal with it. It's gonna be in salt water after all, and I do not want to have to paint it every couple of trips so go a really thick coat hoping that helps it long last a little bit longer before I need to repaint it. Yeah, well there it is finished product all painted up and ready for use. I just got to get some short link chain to go with it. I did have plenty of chain but it's either not galvanized or the galvanizer's old and starting to wear through. I was going to send it to get re-galvanized with the anchor itself and use that, but given the cost of galvanising, it's cheaper to go and buy some more chain. Well, that brings us to the end of the video. It ended up being a good deal longer than I intended, but I have shown you everything you need to know about building this anchor. I'll draw up some rough plans with some measurements in case you want to build one for yourself. A lot of people these days have a welder, so you do have the ability to make your own reef anchor, and you can probably do a better job than some of the ones you buy. Now that I've got this, I am all set for anchoring out overnight on some of the deeper reefs. So you can look forward to those videos coming up. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Until next time, good fishing. <laughs>